Photoshop AI. This may be one of the most important updates we have ever gotten in terms of advancements within Photoshop. We have seen tools come out over the past number of years that have made our jobs a lot easier when it comes to photo editing. But with generative fill and the remove tool and the whole AI aspect coming into Photoshop, this is gonna change the game for a lot of creators out there and it's gonna create a lot of discussion as you probably have already seen online. So what I'm gonna do is talk to you about some of the things that this can do and what it can't do, but at the same time talk to you a little bit about what this means and where we should apply it and when we should hold back as creators. So let's get down to it. All right, now I have the recent update to uh, Photoshop beta here. There's been updates that are coming out every few weeks to about a month thereabouts to sort of update this process. Now, one of the cool things that I like about this is what Adobe is doing is they are actually going to reward the creators of these images. Now, what I mean by that is from the our sources out there is that when obviously in beta, there will be no royalties paid, but what it's doing, it's pulling images from Adobe stock photos from the whole gallery of images. And they've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of photos. But when this goes public, from what I understand is that those creators that it pulls images from that have uploaded to Adobe Stock Photos will actually get some royalties out of this. Now, again, there will be some AI that manipulates the images, so you may not recognize exactly what's being taken out of your photo, but they are they are obviously have a database and they're gonna be doing that, which is really cool because some of these other applications that you see online don't do that. They just pull images from the web and they sort, and they sort of like, you know, bring it into your image and as a result, you have no rights anymore. So if your image is being used, you can't do anything about it. But Adobe's taking the, the right step in my personal opinion. All right, so let's look into Photoshop beta real quick here. And as we see, we are in it right now. And if you go through each of these um, pictures I have kind of selected here, we have this bar that it's at the bottom. Select subject, remove background, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanna move this bar, case in point, this is not really explanatory, but if you uh, watched a couple of videos, you may know this. You can actually just grab by that white uh, horizontal bar and you can bring it to wherever you want it to go. Now, I like it to get it out of my image that is on my main display because it can sometimes get in the way, especially if I'm editing. So I like to put it up here. Now you can do select subject, remove background, and of course you can add different things into play. But a lot of people, what we're doing now is actually removing items that are in the image. That makes it a lot easier. That reduces so much time. And I think for a lot of photographers and creators out there, this is acceptable. I think when you're totally manipulating a person or manipulating a scene, you're doing some sort of, let's say, composite work. Yeah, it's nice to say that you're using AI to help with that. And I think that's always good to, to put that in the comment section below or your caption if you're posting this online. But you know, for things like this, removing little subjects out there, I don't think that's a big of an issue. Case in point, we've got this light bulb right here in front of this lady's face. Now, I like the image, but I don't like the light bulb. So what I would normally do is take the lasso tool and I would do a content aware fill. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Let's do it the old way that it was that you would do. You take this uh, lasso, you bring it around the light bulb here. And then again, I'm using a trackpad. I actually, a Wacom tablet or some sort of drawing tablet would help a lot with this tool. But I would go to content aware fill, right? This is what was used to be in Photoshop. Now it's gonna pull from different areas. And as you can see right here, it is all over the place. It doesn't know where to pull from to sort of mask this image is pulling from the hair it's pulling from her veil uh it's all over and as you remove stuff it sort of changes the images but it doesn't look good at all right okay now let's do generative fill let's see what this does now we're not going to add any sort of prompt let's just see what ai does within photoshop will it remove this and will it replace it with something else Let's find out. It does take a while depending on the processing speed. Of course, you have to be connected to the internet on this. You cannot just do this offline. So keep that in mind if you didn't know that already. And now it'll say this gener this generative images were removed because they violate user guidelines. This does happen from time to time and it could be because of the shape, okay? And now this, I've seen it on skin and I'll show you that in a second, but also on shapes because it could look a little, yeah. All right, so let's just type this here remove light bulb sometimes you have to tell it exactly what you want it to do because it may not know based on the shape so we'll try that again this happens a lot on skin by the way if you're trying to let's say remove lines or wrinkles it may come up with that warning and it's just more i guess to safety precautions or whatever may have you so let's see what it does okay not bad kind of removed it replaced it with a little something in the background but we've got a few options here 
right? I got a little bit of flare coming in here. So it's recreating some sort of bokeh flare, some sort of lens flare, which is interesting. You get three options here. Now, if you don't like any of these options, actually look at this, how it's rebuilding sort of the veil right here on option number three. If you don't like this, you can actually go right here and generate again, okay? And what you'll do is you're gonna see it's kind of created another layer here. So what you'll do if you like this at the very end is you can merge the layers and you can edit on top of that. That's something, sometimes what I like to do is so I can do multiple layers of editing. So we're back into this again and I can say, all right, it's pretty good, but not there. But I would say maybe number one here is the closest. If we look at the original image, it did a pretty good job. Look, it's added in all this detail here. This looks really good. So what I'll do is I will actually merge this, go to layers and merge visible. So it's one, all right? And then I'll do this one more time. And let's see, actually, let me make it a little bit bigger here. And I'll tell you why in just a second, because let's see if this works without having to add a prompt. Sometimes when you actually make the, the circle or your mask too small, you'll leave a pretty definitive line. That means you're gonna have to go back in there and you're gonna have to re-edit. See, again, we're getting that uh, image were removed because it violates user guidelines. I mean, it means that it could be something else. That's fine. So we'll just type in here. Okay, remove lens flare. Again, it's trial by error. It's not gonna happen overnight, but let me tell you right now at this point in time, this is so much better than what I would normally have to do from cloning and all these other tools. Look at this. This is pretty good. This is really good already. I mean, this looks pretty damn natural. If I wanna say, well, let's just see another option, I'll do it more, one more time. This is what's interesting about this tool. You know how much time this has already saved me? To just remove that would have taken about a half hour. This is done within seconds. Again, okay, let's go back and see, do we have anything better? I mean, it's pretty good as it is, to be honest with you. We're now just, I mean, we're splitting hairs. I'm gonna keep this, I like this version. You can give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can tell why you like it because it looks more like that. And then I can say, okay, great, you know what? Go to layer and I'm going to verge visible. I can get rid of this if I want. If I wanna take this portion out, I can, but look how much this works. Now you're gonna see some of these lines right here coming into play. Now. For some people, that may bother them and it may not, depending on the, the resolution of your image. If it does, that's where you have to go into the healing brush and sort of reduce that or take that out. That's a little bit more time. But again, where we were at from the very beginning to now is pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, so now let's move on to this other image here. Now, as we see, we have a black curtain on the left-hand side. Now, this was a a beautiful vintage car that was shot in a studio. And as you know, in studio, sometimes you can't have all the walls completely as one color, you're gonna to have to play around with Photoshop a little bit. Now, this would take a lot of time if you were to do this manually previously. But now, I can literally just take the lasso tool. Again, to be really finite with this, it does actually ha um, help to have like a Wacom tablet or some sort of drawing tablet just to be very exact, but I'm just gonna do a rough estimate for you here. And we're gonna do a generative fill. Let's see what it does on its own. Here, now look at this. This is pretty good. It's matching the lighting, matching the texture of the previous wall. Now, again, my masking of the car is at 100%. I'll have to clean that up right there, but it's done a pretty good job. And I've got three different variations here. Second variation has got some sort of something back there. I have no idea what that is. And the third one is a little bit off, but again, you can regenerate again if you wanna be a little bit more precise or see what else it comes up with. And you can always go back and redo this over and over again until you get the exact look. But how much time that saved me. That's where this is really gonna be beautiful and useful. I was adding some sort of uh, door there that looks off. Uh, again, not so good. I would say number one may be the best right there. And if I wanna merge it, let's say merge, merge visible. Great, go back into here, clean that up. Generate fill, do it one more time. Probably get rid of that seam in the wall right there. This is, Awesome. And again, how much time did it take me? This is what's absolutely amazing about it all. So this is where I think the tool for me works really, really well. Now, this works great, but as you see right here, there's a little bit of a seam 
that's coming into play. A little bit of a line, not 100%. I can go back in there and I can clean that up, but much better than what I had previously. So it's not 100%. I know some um, you know, channels have been showing that it works 100% right off the bat. It's a little trial and error, but this is another image that, again, this was taken with a 100 megapixel uh, medium format camera. There's a lot of resolution in this. Let's see how it handles it. Now, I love this shot, but this arm right here is in the way. Now, I am gonna just go trace around the arm and there we go. Come back down here. And let's see where we're at with this. Let's do a generator fill. You have this option now. Look at this. Look how natural this looks. Amazing. This is a 100 megapixel image. It's noticed the depth, it noticed the shades, it added a little bit of the branches right there, and we've got three options to play with. This is matching the wood almost perfectly. I mean, this is scary how good this is. Look at this. Now, the third one may be a little bit off. One or two, I think number, number two might be the best, but I'll do it one more time just to see again Look what this did. It rebuilt the image based on what's around it, the colors, the tones, the grade on the image, and it's matching it. That in itself, ladies and gentlemen, is friggin' awesome. By the way, if you like this video and you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, subscribe and hit that like button as well. Helps us out a lot. Okay, and we are back with another, another set here. And again, most of these I could definitely use and nobody would know the difference. I'm saying number one, or number two is right there. Actually, I'm gonna go with the first version right here uh, on the number two section, and there we have it. How about that? Absolutely awesome. All right, and before we go to my next point, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Meet the Cyborg 15 gaming laptop from MSI. Check out its translucent material design that not only looks good, but feels good thanks to its ultra lightweight chassis at only 1.98 kilograms. Give yourself the upper edge in gaming with its blazing fast performance powered by the latest 12th gen Intel Core i7H series processor and NVIDIA RTX 4000 series GPUs. And stay immersed with its Nahibic twin speaker sound system that provides an auditory feast like no other. For more details, check out MSI.com. Let's get into this. Let's say you take an image, right? And you're like, oh, my crop is off. Like I've got this beautiful shot of this white tiger jumping out of the water at the zoo, leaping to get something but I've got half of it, a little bit of his, his left ear cut off here. And I'm going, oh man, only if I could, right? Well, let's say I wanna bring this out a little bit more. And it's like, okay, I've got this here, right? I gotta do a generative fill. You take the rectangle. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it can add more to this image and make it exactly what I want it to be. And this also helps a lot, especially when we're doing crops for Instagram, you have to do that four by five or five by four aspect ratio because you want that picture to fill up your screen, right? But you're like, oh, I missed the crop. I wish I had a little bit more space. And there you have it. Now, okay, this is option number one. Got rid of the ear, but it did bring up the whiskers and it looks pretty natural. This is pretty good. Now, again, we've got some whiskers here. I can get remove that if I want. That one's completely off number three. Usually number three out of all your choices is the, pretty much the off one here. Let's just do another generation again, but look how much better this looks. You see the water, you see the texture, you see the fur, the depth of field, it is there. If I wanna remove the whiskers right there near the air, ear area, it's on 100%, that's easy to do. How much time did this save me? This is where I think the gener generative fill works really well, sort of expanding your image. And Photoshop already kind of had this with your crop tools. They were already doing this, but now it's taken to another level with how much it can actually recognize and render. It's pretty damn awesome, this. Okay, better, a little bit of that seam there. Not 100%. It's not bad. And then if I wanna just, I'll show you what I would do with this in case of point, then I would just take this tool, which is your patch tool. And you can play around with this a little bit. So you can play just a little bit. Boom, I remove these whiskers and and aware here. Sometimes the content aware works better than uh, the normal. And we're pretty much good to go. At least I have something definitely much more usable. I might want to build this up a little bit more in this area, but again, that is a great starting point and it took me minutes 
versus ours. Going back to AI again a little bit, because you know, talking to a lot of my photographer friends out there, some of them are pure, some, and they may be like you who believe that, hey, this is cheating. This isn't what you, you should be just taking the photo and you can do a little bit of editing with color, but you shouldn't be doing anything else. You should let the scene be as is. Let me explain something. There's always been editing done, even in film photography for years, from dodging and burning to cropping. I mean, even retouching. Things have been done and they were done in a much more manual process. Some people don't understand this now, or maybe they didn't, you weren't exposed to it back in those days. Maybe they got into film photography or photography later on in life, but there's always been some editing involved. Where I do feel there's a line drawn is when you're actually completely manipulating somebody to be completely different, unless you're creating art. And that's when you're saying this is an art, my artistic imp impression of what I want this to be. That is acceptable. And I think as we as creators and photographers need to understand that this is the world that the younger generation is going to know and understand, and they're gonna take a photo. And yes, AI is gonna get better. It'll probably in a few years time, the camera will be able to you know, compose for you, get the right shot, everything that you need. And it's really about tweaking the image to be exactly what you want it to be. You'll type in a few commands and voila, you're there. Photography is art. I look at it as art. And art is our impression or our outlook on the world or how we see it. And we all see things differently. I do feel it's great to acknowledge this in your captions and your comments and when you're posting these things or when you're going to display them in a gallery, for example, that yes, you have used some tools to play around with, but I don't think you have to list everything out because look, I mean, you don't, that's ridiculous. But I feel like if you're going to take somebody's face and you're going to manipulate it to the point of unrecognizability, but you started from someone, I do think you need to give them credit. I think that's valid. And if you are going to take from other artists, I do think it's valid to give them credit as well. That's my stance on this, but I'll tell you what, this tool right here is going to change the game for photographers and creators. And when it gets into video, it's going to be a wow. Holy cow. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the new Photoshop AI generative fill. Um, a lot of great tools in there, and I haven't shown you all of them, but that's the one that everybody's talking about. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, once again, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I'll chat to you guys very soon. Take care.